And the sixth angel sounded. Now we're at the sixth trumpet. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. Okay. So remember the, do you remember in our previous text, seven angels up there in heaven sounding seven trumpets, right? Mm -hmm. Now, at trumpet number six. In the sixth one, you'll notice the Bible says when he sounded the sixth, when he sounded the sixth trumpet, a voice came out from the altar. Remember, there's a golden altar up in heaven. Remember that? Remember, what did the golden altar consist of? The prayers of the saints, correct? Yes. yes. So then the prayers of the saints are coming out of here. When he sounds it off, the Bible says a voice comes out the voice from the golden uh, from the four horns so it has four horns over here comes out is that possible absolutely that's why Jesus said if you don't cry out the rocks yeah, right. will cry out God made Balaam's donkey to talk the Bible says that when he comes down the tre trees will clap their hands in joy Amen. what does that mean the Bible says that all of creation, they declare, declare the glory of God. What does all this mean, Pastor? Well, I'll tell you what that means. It tells you that God will take an inanimate object and can make a voice come out. That's good. If God can do that, don't you think Satan can do that with his idols? Ooh. Oh, well, that's good. oh I, he's, the idol spoke to me. God is real. Jesus is real. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. That means Satan can do it too. Watch out, man. Watch out for that kind of stuff. All right, let's look at verse 14 right here. <coughs> Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet. So notice the altar is telling an angel what to do. Like Balaam's donkey told what Balaam was supposed to do. And God told the Pharisees, the most righteous people of their days, the rocks will praise me better than you do. What does that mean, preacher? God don't need you to fulfill his calling. God really needs me. Without me, then Bible-believing Christi Bible Christianity will fall. No, we'll do fine, all right? We'll do fine. God can use an inanimate object to give glory to his name. He don't need you. And he can have an inanimate object tell you what to do. Me, who knows much more of the Bible? Yeah, you. He can have a thing tell you what to do. How about that? That will teach you a thing or two about pride. People have so much pride that you better watch out for that thing. It's a monster. It's a monster. And God can use an inanimate object to teach you a lesson. That's why you better watch out. Some of you pastors who've got a lot of pride, you can take like a, a little child who might have more wisdom than some pastors. It may take, uh, you better watch out for that pride, man. Sometimes you husbands, you may have to have leadership of the house, but that wife of yours may say a thing or two that might teach you something more than you should have known. You better watch out. Some of you who are uh, teachers and in charge of uh, positions that God put you over, don't let that pride get to the best of you. The Lord will have a thing teach you. He'll have a thing teach you, okay? Isn't he already doing it right now with the foolish things of this world? to confound the wisdom of the PhD scholars in Harvard, Yale, Berkeley, Stanford, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he did. He's teaching them a lesson. He decided to not give them the truth, but to common, ordinary people. How about that? All right. What does the altar say to the sixth angel that's blowing that sixth trumpet? Look at verse 14. Loose, here's something interesting. Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. There's another portal opened up. See that? He had this one opened up, but then he's opening up another one by the great river Euphrates. You know what this means? There are several portals in. There's a saying that there could be 12 portals of hell. I'm not sure. 12 portals to the underworld. I'm not sure if that's true or not. But I'll tell you this one. The Bible shows that there is more than one portal. Jesus said in Matt, that at the book of Matthew, the gates, not gate, gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Oh, yeah. There are several entrances, see. 
several portals. And it's in Euphrates. Now notice right here, these angels are bound underneath the Euphrates. What is going on? It's like a genie in the lamp being bound way below when you go down and then you release them. So there are four, excuse me, not fourth, there are four angels bound. Wait a minute. Are there angels bound at an underworld region? Go to the book of Jude. This is where you get the word, the idea of Tartarus. Tartarus. Let's look at Jude, verse 6. We're going to look at Jude 6. Notice what the Bible says right here concerning about fallen angels and they're bound in Tartarus. Verse 6, the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. They left their heavenly abode. But he hath reserved in, look at this, they're reserved in a compartment in hell, in everlasting chains under darkness uh, unto the judgment of the great day. Look at that. They're bound. Four of them, God lets loose. So these are angels burning in hell, and then God decides to let loose four of them. Boy, do you think there's going to be chaos after that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can only imagine. If you look at uh, 2 Peter 2, verse 4, you don't have to turn there, but if you want to, go ahead. The verse says, For if God spared not the angels as sin, but cast them down to hell, and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. That matches with Jude 6. See that? But the Bible says they cast them down into hell. Tartarus is not an English word. The English translation for that is hell. But the Greek translation is Tartarus. How about that? So hell has uh, several Greek words. It has Gehenna, it has Tartarus, and it has Hades. The King James Bible translator, in our English word, we don't have those kind of different words. So they translate it accurately. They translate it hell. It is very interesting that if you look up hell, that the only time Tartarus is mentioned is only where the angels are. It's only where the angels are. That's why... Clarence Larkin and other dispensationalists, they mention that where the angels are at is Tartarus. If you want to say hell, that's fine too. That's an accurate translation. The reason why he said Tartarus is to make sure that, to understand that there's a distinct department in hell for angels wow. where we're not at. Hmm. I don't believe in that. You don't believe in that. Matthew 23, there are different compartments. Greater damnation. Judas Iscariot hath his own place. Mm -hmm. Everyone has got a compartment in hell, including these angels, these fallen angels. Wow. So that's why we would say Tartarus. So guess what? You're telling me, Pastor, that out of Tartarus are going to come out four demoniacs, fallen angels, and they're going to, yep, they're going to do something. Let's see what they do. Isn't this going to be scary? Boom, boom, boom. You thought this was scary enough. All these demoniacs coming out of the bottomless pit. Now you got these four Tartarus fallen angels. They're going to do something. Okay, let's go back to Revelation. 9 verse 15. The four angels were loosed. That's right. They were bound, remember. Tartarus. Now they're cut loose. Which were prepared. Now notice God has a exact same time and date for these four Tartarus angels to torment the world, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. Look at that. So God has a date. He has a date set up, an exact time. I don't know what, but it may be like, okay, so it's going to happen at 9 o'clock in the morning, 
It may happen at uh, September 11, because that was such a tragic day for America, so it might be for this one too. And it may be 2020. And then God might just go, I'm not saying it is, all right? Please don't post videos on that, all right? I'm just giving a random example, okay? But God's going to do something like that, and it's going to take place at 9 o'clock in the morning. And God prepared that, and then boom, they come out, and they're going to start, and then they start tormenting. Uh, Revelation chapter 9, you'll notice right here, it says, For to slay how many people? The third part of men. That's a third of your world wiped out. Now imagine this, is that you got these poor, unfortunate souls who are like bitten out, and they're like, I want death, I want death, five months. Finally, they get over it. And when they get over it, then these guys finish the job and wipe out a third of the population. And people want to say, I want to go through the tribulation after that. You're nuts. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to go through the tribulation, man. All right, let's go back to Revelation, and we'll look at chapter 9. Notice that a third of the world's population is slaughtered. Now, if you compare that with Revelation 6, you can jump to Revelation 6 and compare. Notice that death and hell in the fourth seal. Now, remember, that means the sixth trumpet is after the fourth seal, right? Is that correct? Okay. Remember, we established that. In the fourth seal, do we recall how many of the world was wiped out? It was noticed... At verse 8, chapter 6, verse 8, a quarter of the world. So a quarter of the world is wiped out. And God does not think that's enough. And then over here, when the four angels are bound, he adds a third of what's left over in the world. Do you know what that death number will toll up to? Billions. Literally billions. Half the billions. What's that? Yeah, there you go. It's a huge number right there. Very huge number. All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 9. And then we'll look at verse 16. 16. So this is utter chaos and nightmare. As you'll read in verse 16, the number of the army of the horsemen. Wait a minute. So notice right here that when these four Tartarus angels are loose, that there are these certain horsemen coming out. Dr. Ruckman mentioned in his commentary that these horsemen could be referring to the same demoniac locusts at verse 7. Because remember, they were like unto horses prepared to battle. So it may be that case. So it could be this. It could be that it could be referring to the same demoniac creatures who are in this location in hell and they follow these four demoniac angels. So it could be the same one, or it could be a different brand of devils, different brand of demons. So it can, it's going to be a scary thing, I'll tell you that much. It can either be the same demoniacs at the fifth trumpet, and then they join uh, these four fallen angels. Or it could be a new brand of demons, of locusts. All right, let's uh, go back over here. These horsemen. The number of the army of the horsemen were... Look at the number, 200,000, but what? Times a thousand. There's 200 million. That number's up to millions right over there. Millions. Wow. And I heard the number of them. Now, what John might mean right here, and I heard the number of them, he could be talking about that perhaps uh, the Lord told him the number is going to be 200 million, something like that. Or it could be where he heard the number of these uh, horsemen coming out, like, like he mentioned at verse uh, 7. Verse 7 and verse 9. He heard their sound of these demoniac creatures coming out. So it could be either or. But either way, that's a huge number of armies. So this army is going to match, you'll notice, at Revelation chapter 19 uh, Revelation chapter excuse me 16 16 16 now look at right here this may be referring to something pretty interesting about the Orient actually 
Revelation 16, verse 12. The sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. Uh, remember that sixth trumping sounding out on the river Euphrates? And then there are these uh, horsemen coming out. And it's the army, right? That's what it said in Revelation 9. It's an army. Now look at this. And the water thereof was dried up, that the what? Ways of the kings of the east might be prepared. That is God's role concerning the Orient, concerning Asia, is that they're going to play a part within the tribulation. So, these creatures over here, Tartarus angels, they could be, believe it or not, they could be siding with China then. If this is referring to the same context where they're siding with the kings of the east so that they can wipe out a third of the world, then this could refer to where these rogue nations under China do not want to listen to the Antichrist United Nations, and then it could be such a huge annihilation slaughter that the four Tartarus angels will verse against the Antichrist and his fallen, and there's just slaughter everywhere so this could explain why the antichrist side you got a lot of torment and then the rogue nation side you get a lot of torment it is if you read revelation 6 which we already explained revelation 6 there is no doubt there is rogue nations that goes against the antichrist nation if you look at daniel chapter uh if you look at revelation chapter 6 the first part there are rogue nations because it says he went forth conquering and to conquer he has to conquer the nations who disagree with him. If you look at Daniel chapter 11, the Bible refers to the Antichrist as a king of the north and the king of the south as the different rogue nations who disagree with him. These rogue nations, if you look at current events, it would match a lot with what you see with the communist and the Muslim nations. So then you'll see Russia involved and then you'll see China involved and then certain Arab nations involved. I mean, you're already seeing Iraq, Iran, things going on right now currently. So you see, it's coming. Yeah. Amen. It's coming real Amen. soon. And if it is true that these Tartarus angels and their demoniacs are siding with China, Russia, and the other rogue nations, my goodness, like we're getting close. We're getting there. We're getting right here. All right, let's go back to verse 17. Verse 17. I mean, I don't know if you study current events, uh, study stuff on China, but China is making big waves on technology that is scaring America. And then uh, I've talked to some people who work for uh, the Bureau, actually. So I have some. And then they mention about that. Excuse me, I almost coughed. They almost mention, I mean, not they almost mention, they mention that concerning some things that's going on with China, I don't want any of you to follow what, the, what they're doing with China. I mean, they're doing things with genes that uh, they're trying to create a brand new generation and superior group of children, etc. So it's, and then uh, you've heard about the systems where everything's going through scanning now and they're uh, decreasing points if you don't follow the way that they do things. I mean, it's really getting there. It's really getting there. So these guys are really on par of a game. It's really going to be a world war, pretty much, that, which is why Revelation 6 says it's a red horse, and the nations are verse fighting against each other. World War Three. Okay, let's look back at Revelation 9, verse 17. So this army, 200 million, would match up with the kings of the east, at Revelation 16, and they might be joining together forces, the four Tartarus angels, their huge millions demoniac with the eastern parties. Verse 17, thus I saw the horses in the vision. So John sees these horses in a vision, but he describes them. And they may be distinguished from the demoniac locust because it's kind of different, but it's kind of similar. And them that sat on them, so there are people riding these demoniac creatures. Whereas earlier we saw at Revelation 9-7, those demoniac creatures, no one's riding on them. Revelation 9-17, keep reading, having breastplates of fire. 
and of jacinths and brimstone. So these beings are uh, wearing breastplates, just like these locusts, but then their breastplates contain fire, jewelry of jacinths, and then brimstone, as if coming out of hell. See that? They're coming out with armor from hell, so to speak. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. So the heads of these horses have heads of lions. Satan is as a what? Roaring lion. Might be something more literal to that as a demoniac creature. And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Kind of like Satan the dragon, right? Fire, smoke, and brimstone. See? There's something connected with Satan, devils here. By these three was the third part of men killed. Okay, so there's something going on at verse 18. At verse 18, there are three things that uh, kills off a third of the world right here. What are they? The three things that kill them are by the fire. So there's fire going around. By the smoke. There's some gas or smoke coming out. And by the brimstone. So there's this ball that comes out that's mingled up with fire. Which issued what? Out of their mouths. It comes out of their mouth. Which is why some people, uh, some commentators think this could be referring to a tank at verse 17. Now obviously, what we believe in is that these are demoniac creatures. That would make way more sense. But again, there could be a what? Element of truth where these tanks from, if they do, if they join up with the kings of the East, they can join up with China. And maybe they're doing something at the lab where they're not just advancing their technology, but also the biology and genetics, which they already are. And if you co-mingle them together, it can come out into some kind of tank, demoniac form. Crazy stuff. And this is going to be from the rogue nation side. If these four Tartarus angels and their demoniacs join forces with the kings of the East, with China and North Korea, etc. Because uh, it would look like a tank because verse 18, by the fire, because there's obviously rubble and fire from that. But also by the smoke, so it could be something gaseous that would shoot out of the tank. Something, uh, some kind of gas or poisonous. And by the what? Brimstone. That could be a missile right there. See? So it could be commingled with the elements of hell with their technology. That might be something. You go home and pray about it. Okay. Let's look at verse 19. For their power is in their mouth and in their tail. So something shoots out of their tail too then, where it kills. For their tails... Notice right here, it matches with these demoniac locusts at verse 7. Their uh, tails were like unto serpents. So notice it's like a serpent form. Now, Satan is known as what? A serpent. So this is like a dragon, a serpent. This is no doubt a demoniac, see? Something demonic. It's not just an ordinary tank. And had heads. And with them they do hurt. This serpent is where you get your hydra. See? See? Notice right here, the end is a serpent, but the serpent is what had heads. Is that what it said right there? Mm -hmm. said heads. Oh, I don't believe in that. You didn't read Revelation, did you? About a dragon having what? Seven heads? There, if you want to talk about Hydra in the Bible, there's your Hydra. Hydra is not in the Bible. Fairy tale made up. You don't read your Bible. It is in there. How about that? That's going to be some kind of demoniac creature that's going to spook you out, man. Keep reading verse 19. And with them, they do hurt. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> we know they're going to do hurt. It's going to injure a lot of people. 